In this video, I'll describe much of what's new in Stat Graphics version 18. Stat Graphics 18 is a Windows desktop product designed for statistical analysis, data visualization, and predictive analytics. It contains over 260 different procedures. The point and click interface of Stat Graphics 18 is ideally suited for use by practitioners who are not professional statisticians. Stat Graphics 18 contains 30 new procedures for data analysis and data visualization. There are significant enhancements to 18 other existing procedures. We've added capabilities for handling big data with millions of cases. There's also a new installation procedure with activation, deactivation, and checkout check-in of network seats. Here you see some of the new procedures for visualizing data. In the top left, you see a population pyramid which is used to show how populations change over time. In the upper right is a windrows diagram used to show the distribution of wind speed and wind direction. In the bottom left is a population map of the largest cities in the United States in 2010. We can now create maps from any shapefile. The bottom right shows a heat map displaying the total crime rate in each state over a period of years. Other new plots include a violin plot, which combines a box and whisker plot with a non-parametric density estimator. We've also added a tornado plot to compare the distribution of categorical data in two samples, for example, men and women. In the bottom left is a Likert plot, which shows the results of a survey where participants were asked to rank their opinion on a Likert scale from strongly agree to strongly disagree. In the bottom right is a donut chart, which is similar to a pie chart, but more visually appealing. Some other new data visualization procedures include the time series baseline plot shown in the upper left. This is used when you have time series with an upper and lower limit. The plot you see here indicates the occurrence of El Ninos and La Ninas. The plot in the upper right is a ribbon plot used to display a response surface. The bottom left shows a sunflower plot. A sunflower plot replaces an XY scatter plot when you have lots of data. The number of rays and the color of each sunflower indicate the density of observations in a particular location on the graph. Finally, in the bottom right is a trivariate density estimator showing the distribution of three random variables. The new statistical procedures we've added include an equivalence and non-inferiority testing procedure. This is used to demonstrate that two means are essentially equivalent to each other. There's a new distribution fitting procedure which can fit a distribution to data with any combination of left-censored, right-censored, and interval-censored data. The orthogonal regression procedure fits a linear or nonlinear model to data with error in both the x and y variables. In the time series section, we've added a procedure to perform X13 ARIMA seats. This is the seasonal adjustment procedure used by a lot of government agencies. We use R stack graphics to R interface to let R do the calculations. The results are then returned to stack graphics for display. 
we've added a text mining procedure which will go through a set of documents, look at the text, and create a word cloud showing which words are used most often. A number of new procedures have been added for statistical process control. One is the multivariate tolerance region which creates a statistical tolerance region for two or more variables. You should also watch for the new book from CRC Press about to be published titled Process Capability Analysis Estimating Quality. It describes a lot of the new StatGraphics 18 SPC procedures. We've added definitive screening designs to the DOE wizard. Definitive screening designs allow you to estimate models involving both main effects and quadratic effects in a small number of runs. In the multivariate methods section, we've added a procedure for multidimensional scaling. MDS takes observations in a large dimensional space and reduces it to a map in either two or three dimensions. For predictive analytics, we've added a new procedure that performs CART, classification and regression trees. It builds a tree that allows one to predict the values of either a categorical or quantitative variable. The 64-bit version of StackGraphics 18 has new facilities for dealing with very large data sets. A new file format stores data on a column-by-column -column basis in binary format. This allows the data to be read into main memory very quickly. Graphs such as scatter plots automatically switch to hexagon plots when the amount of data is large. Here's a hexagon plot created by the simple regression procedure. It's taken all U.S. commercial flights between 1991 and 2008, of which there were somewhat in excess of 100 million. It's fit a linear regression relating the arrival delays of each flight to the departure delay. It shows the number of observations in various locations with hexagons. The color of the hexagon, the darkness of the hexagon, indicates how many observations are located at different points throughout that space. StatGraphics 18 also has a new installation procedure. We've written a web service to let users easily move the program from one computer to another. You'll notice on the License Manager dialog box shown here, there's a button labeled Deactivate. Once you deactivate your license on one computer, you can then activate it automatically on another. For companies with multi-user network licenses, we've written a new network management program. This program lets network administrators see how many users are using the licenses at any given time. It also allows them to check out seats for users that need to install a license temporarily on a standalone computer. This video has only scratched the surface of what's new in StackGraphics 18. If you'd like more details or want to watch additional instructional videos, visit us at www.stackgraphics.com.